So it's time that we get to our game of the day. And I'm not sure if you know this or not, but you, Stephen Hart, are kind of famous around One Soccer for what we dubbed as Stephen Hartisms. And what we mean by that is some quips we hear from players in interviews or I mean, we stream all the, we get all the press conferences in. So our producers and our talent, we have seen and heard some of the best Stephen Hartisms. So we're going to read you a couple of our favorites and we want you to explain to the, explain them to us. And first up, this one was for the fans. What was Taste the Soup all about? Oh boy. I, I regretted saying that the minute it came out of my mouth. But <laughs> I mean, basically what it was, was that uh, Canadian soccer, we were struggling to put put players in the stands. And, and in 2007 uh, Gold Cup, I, I, I thought that the team, you know, um, the players, they, they, they did a t- tremendous job in, in playing differently and bringing something different um, to, to our game. And uh, they, they were exciting to, to watch. And, and then, you know, when, you know when, when I was being placed in a situation where I, w- I was now in charge of the team, um, collectively we would we were trying to do something different so it basically said come 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 and check it out you know come on come and see what we're about you know don't be a critic and you're not paying to sit down in the stand if you pay to sit down in the stands you can say whatever you want you've paid your money so come taste the soup and it's still it's still difficult for uh, for the men's national team to, to to fill BMO field right now, and I think that will come as success comes. But Stephen, just because we have you here and you are a former national team coach, maybe can you compare that that team that you took through cycling in 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 2012 to the, the group that's that's there now? I mean, what you liked maybe about that team more than the team now, and maybe what you liked about the team now more than you liked about your team. Um, uh, I, I think the team now has uh, probably probably a, a lot of flexibility in the offense. Um, we we potentially in, in my team we potentially could have had it, but by the time I took over, we went through a real bad patch with with, with losing some of the attacking quality. We lost Ali Gerber, we lost uh, Josh um, Josh Simpson, um, Dwayne got injured in the Panama game, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we just didn't have that young player coming through that was ready um, to, to, to take up the helm. But this, this team here has a, has a lot of flexibility in, in terms of, of from the midfield and forward line going forward. And, and even from an attacking fullback perspective, I'm not going to get into the, the debate about where Jonathan, you know, where... Uh, yeah, Alfonso. Yeah. yeah, Alfonso should be playing. But... Um, you know, they, they have that, that flexibility and, and they, they, on their day, I think in CONCACAF, they can, they can beat anybody, uh, especially at home. What about just one, just one more on, on this subject? I mean, Atiba, he's kind of, he's he, I'm not really sure what his place is right now in the squad. I mean, will he get back into it? Is there still a place in, in, in qualifying? I'm not sure. Um, but would you like to see a guy like that get one final go and, and one final kind of send off game? And what can you say about his involvement at the national team level? He should get a final send off game. Um, in my, my opinion, um, I, I think he's been a wonderful servant. Um, he's been Canada's best player for a number of years. Um, I have a place for him in Halifax if he wants to end his career in the CPL. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think he should he should get a send off and a rousing one at that. Well, if he does go to Halifax, he will be in for some more of these hardisms. Let's get to our second one: the ball doesn't sweat. <laughs> I've been saying that since since under seventeen, you know, because players would come in at fifteen and seventeen and. They would, you know, they would hang on to the balls in the wrong places, and you don't want to discourage that. Um, you hope you hope they learn lessons by losing it. But the the the, the ball movement and the ball speed is very very important in the game, and the, the ball never sweats. So if you do it right and you do it quickly, you can do it how you know how much you want. That ball is not going to get tired. So <laughs> make use of it. Okay, and a quiz for you now. Only one of these of the next three heartisms I'm going to say is real, Stephen. You have to tell us which one you actually said because they all are very believable. First of all, don't hate the player, hate the game, which sounds a lot like a Stephen Hartism. You can't wag the dog or football is a lie, which is true. Football is a lie. Ah, 
We thought we were going to stump you on that. <laughs> and can you explain football is a lie to us? Well, it's a lie. You know? <laughs> Why is it the, a lie, the, Stephen? The, the reality is, is you can play very well. You can dominate the game and lose. That's the reality of this game, more than I think any other sport. Um, and uh, that's, that's the reality of it. You, you can totally dominate a game and lose. So football is a lie. You know, some, some little thing can happen, whether it be somebody slips at the wrong moment or the referee makes a bad call and you, know, you lose the game. And you can play very poor and win and people go away talking about how great the, the, the team played. And you, you're, you're in the dressing room thinking, I hope these players don't think this, uh, this, this was a good one, you know, because you, you played poorly and you won the game. So it's a lie. Yeah. The game's a lie. One of my arguments for an expanded Euro, which we've already seen, and, and for ultimately an expanded World Cup is, you know, I love watching the Messies and, I, and I've watched Cristiano Ronaldo up close play for Portugal a half dozen times. But there's nothing like watching an underdog go into a World Cup game against a perceived giant and play well and, and really uh, capture the imagination of not just, you know, their country, but also... Uh, people around the world. I mean, Trinidad made a World Cup, Stephen, and um, I can't really remember back to 2002 that much about the games they played, but I'm sure... Six, 2006. 2006, you know, but, you know, does that make sense what I'm saying? I mean, did that happen in, in, in that country? Yeah, oh, for, for sure. I mean, you know, 1.5 million people going to the World Cup was the smallest country until Iceland did it. Um, and then to have, I was there to, to have such a, a very, very, you know, three very good games in the, in the group stage. I mean, England didn't score on them until the 80 something minute. Sweden failed to score with Zlatan and, and, and everything that they had. Um, and, uh, the, the heroics of Shaka Hislop in goal. Um, there's nothing like, well, I mean, there's nothing like a, like an, an underdog. You're right about that. I think every time, I mean, and people would say, well, Trinidad deserved to be there. They qualified, uh, they, they qualified for the World Cup. But the fact of the matter is that every World Cup, there are teams like that who don't make it and don't have that opportunity, which is why I'm looking forward to a 48-team World Cup. Well, I, I, I would prefer to see more emphasis on the, on the qualifications itself um, from television and everything else. Make, make the qualifications a bigger event than they, they, they actually are. Yeah. Um, but but I, I think the best teams deserve to be in the World Cup. Um, I, I you know I I don't know about watering it down you know too much. Uh, I'm a little I'm a little I, I didn't like the Euro. Let me put it that way. I really didn't like the Euro. So there were some bad games at the Euro. I, I'll give you that. Some you're being kind. <laughs> but, but no, okay. But and, and, and what did people say when the World Cup expanded to 32 teams? Well, I mean, I, I had no problem with that then, um, to be honest with you. I had no, because I, I think there are a lot of countries that were, that were missing out. But I mean, you know, at, at some point, it is, the, it is the greatest event. I mean, in, in, in terms, it's a world event. You want to see the best teams. I mean, it, what if you take every sprinter and throw them in the 100 meters in the Olympics? Come on. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's got to be a line somewhere. I didn't expect yeah. you to be against, I didn't know you were against the little guy. So, all right. I'm not well, against the, a little guy. Don't put words in his mouth, Larson. Come on now. 